We had more milk left than we're going to be able to use before it goes bad, so we're going to freeze dry the extra. So it's a great way, if you can get things on sale, to just have extras to freeze dry. So I'm going to put two cups in each one of these pans and pre-freeze them. If you have the newer machines that are level, you could put it directly into the pan and in the freeze dryer. If it's liquids, I would probably put the pan in the freeze dryer first and then add the liquid so you don't have to try to carry it. My machine is the older one, so it's not really an option. So you can pre-freeze them in the pans, but then you're limited to just the whatever you've got pans for. So you can buy extra sets of pans, but these pans give me great control on how much is in each pan. So I'm putting two cups on each one of these pans and I'll pre-freeze them. And then when I bag them, they're already measured out in two cup units, or I can put four cups or six cups or whatever I want in each bag. And it'd probably be easier just to use a scale. Then I could make sure I've got it 100% accurate. Okay. And then those will go into the freezer for pre-freezing. All right, and put them in there and let them pre-freeze. A little bit of ice build up on the freezer shelf. I should get rid of that. All right, so those can pre-freeze. And they'll be ready for freeze drying. Okay, finished a gallon of milk last night. I'm going to do another one today. Had some milk that was going to go past its date while we were on a trip, so we decided to freeze it and then freeze dry it. This is defrosted overnight. Get that turned off. Get this baffle out of there. And put the plastic disc in place. Take the fan off of there. Okay, so when I'm not using it, this is where I hang the fan that I use for the defrost. And then the drain. I just have a gallon jug sitting down at the floor with the tube that makes it into the opening but doesn't make it down to the water level. That's the water that was extracted from the milk. I've got a power strip on this side to plug everything in. So just get this starting pre-chilling. Okay, so I'm going to customize. Got the shelf limit to 110 for the milk, so it doesn't overcook. Seems to work very well. Probably not strictly necessary. Uh, the freeze time will end up being shorter because it's pre-frozen, so it won't take that long. And then the final dry, I like to bump that up to make a hundred percent sure it's dry and with the thermometer in the milk I'll be able to tell and so I can always bypass it. It doesn't really matter. So this freezer is on the other side of the same room as the freeze dryer. So these are the milk that I put in there a while ago. These are the trays from last night and since I had milk in them last night I wasn't going to worry about washing them or anything. I just put them, as soon as I emptied them, I put them right in the freezer to chill and to keep them nice and clean. So, this is the second gallon of milk that I pre-froze. So they've been in there for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now. And now, take them all out and get them onto the trays. And then as soon as the freeze dryer is pre-chilled, they'll go in there. And that will be ready to put more in. 
I can get 24 pans in there of ones in the pans and then if I need more space or when they're frozen I'll pop them out and put them into Ziplocs uh, for waiting their turn. These are some um, tomato sauce. It's in half, half trays ready to go. And I've got them on a little rolling desk that I had. This is what I use for moving things across the, the room from the freeze dryer to the freezer, or from the freezer to the freeze dryer, from the freeze dryer to the bagging table. It's just a little rolling cart. Uh, it was a, I don't know, like a computer desk or something that I had. So it works great for just moving things around when I need to move them. One of the questions I get often is, why not just pour the milk onto the tray and freeze it? Well, two things. One, I only have one set of trays. I could put these in my freezer, pour the milk in and, and pre-freeze. I can't put these into the freeze dryer and pre-freeze or freeze them because I have the older machine that's tilted. And so since it's tilted, you can't get the milk in there. It'll spill out the end. So I need to pre-freeze before I do, uh, before I freeze dry liquids. Now, with this, they're pre-measured this way. Each one of them is two cups. So it's really nice for bagging later. But I can also have dozens of them in the freezer. I think I've had, uh, let's see, I'm doing about eight or 10 in a batch. I've probably had a hundred of these squares in the freezer before waiting for their turn. Anyway. But they pop out pretty easily and I use the parchment to help keep them from sticking to anything. I just give them a little bit of a twist and they pop out pretty nicely. And of course if you were to dip them in hot water that will help them come out almost instantly. But my closest sink uh, or my kitchen sink is two stairways away. I don't want to go up and down the stairs to get there. So when I need to, I use a heat gun. So you can see, I don't have it very even. I, I didn't put this in the freezer flat either, so it could have been better. So again, just flexing the sides out a little bit to Loosen it and then pushing up on the bottom and then giving it a little bit of a twist. All right, and I do like to wear gloves when I'm taking some of the things out of the freezer because they're cold and then they kind of melt and get sticky. So I do wear gloves for that. Next, I'm going to add some thermometers to some of these. So I just have this straw in there to keep the end of it from getting chewed up from the drill bit. And I'm gonna just drill right into the milk. So I'm going about this far in. And I haven't made a jig for it because ideally I'd end up closer to the bottom. This one's actually probably too high. I'll do that again on each one of them. Okay. This will give me some information as it's freeze drying to the, let me know the temperature inside the blocks. And that helps let you know if it's getting completely dry or not. Okay, so as soon as the freezer, or as the freeze dryer is cooled down, they'll go in. In the meantime, I can just set them back in the freezer. So the freeze dryer is pre-cooled now for an hour and a quarter. It says it's negative three degrees. So now it's as cold as the deep freeze is. So time to put the milk in. So I wheeled the milk over. And then I'll put it in the freeze dryer.
These say that they're about at zero. That's about where our freezer is, about zero degrees. Probably zero degrees, plus or minus five degrees. And then continue to freeze them. And I won't actually let the cycle start, the drying, until it's at least negative 40. But I do like to vacuum some of the air out now to make sure that the seal is good so that the seal is already compressed. This is the batch with the milk in it and the thermometers. I want to show the different trays. This is the top tray and you can see it's a little over zero degrees. Maybe, let's see, that would be 10, it must be about 6 degrees. And go down to the next tray down, okay, and that tray is at about 70 degrees. And I think it's because the thermometer is way too high in the milk. Okay, the third tray down, and it's around 15 degrees. And the bottom tray is around 20 degrees. So the machine says it's 68 degrees right now. Again, that's measured on the bottom of the third tray down on this machine. Anyway, that's why I like the thermometers. It gives me a better indication of what's actually going on with each one of them. And I can make the decision to add more time if necessary. Okay, we'll check back later. Okay, the milk is almost done in the freeze dryer. I'll show the temperatures in just a minute. We're getting the bags ready. So I've got, oh, I'm going to use the quart bags, so four of the quart bags, batch 422, and it was started on 914. So batch 422, and just label those, if I'm doing a lot of them, I'll pre-print -pre tags, which is I should have done for this. All right. Okay, the top tray is about 110 degrees. The second tray is a little warmer. In fact, it's uh, about 125. So it's a little warmer than it should be, really. The third tray is about 118, 120. And the bottom tray is closer to about 105. The thermometers all show that it's warm, so I'm going to go with no defrost just to make it quiet in here. So I'll open the drain valve. Let the air back in. Got them on my little transport uh, cart desk and wheel them over to the bagging area. Got the little cart over next to the bagging table so then I'm ready to bag. And these are the one quart bags, uh, the seven mil, the heavy bags. I really like these. They have the gusseted bottoms, the zipper top, uh, says they're they're called a quart, but they're slightly less than a quart, I think. Uh, but they're a great bag. I think the newer ones also come with it rounded off, but I still have a few hundred more of these to use up. But I've gone more and more to using the smaller bags instead of the bigger bags. When I started out, I was trying to get everything in the fewest smallest, the fewest possible bags. So I was using the gallon bag and the two quart bag mostly. Now I've gone to the one quart bag, the pint bag, and the two quart bag. So the one quart bag is probably my number one choice. I'd rather open two uh, one quart ones and use it all than have to use uh, a, a two quart bag and end up only using part of it and, and then forgetting about it and, and having it sit there. So I've gone to just that, or to mostly the, the one quart.
So I definitely go with a lot of smaller bags instead of fewer bigger bags. Uh, and again, some things that might be uh, fine to go the other way, but uh, the more we've done it, the more we like the smaller bag. Okay, now I need to crush up the milk. And for that, I'm using two gallon Ziploc. This is the one I used for the last batch also. So I just kept it dry and clean. Take the thermometer out and just dump these off into there. All right. And just give it a, a quick crush. Kind of shake it down a little bit. It crushes so easy, I wouldn't bother using any kind of machine because it's just, I mean, it's done. And with pretty much no cleanup. Now, using one of the uh, little flexible cutting boards, I roll it up with the smooth side on the inside and insert it into the bag and kind of spread it open at the top and you get a nice little funnel. And with these bags, they stand up. And then you can just kind of pour it all in there. And I kind of hold on to the edge of it a little bit and kind of guide it. And so I don't tip it. So I don't accidentally hit it and tip it. I'm going to tip it a little more so you can see that better, I think. And I just give the Ziploc a little shake. And that's it. And then I just pull the pull the flexible cutting board back out, tapping it as I go to get rid of any of the milk, have it fall into the bag, and put it into the next bag. And if I ever did come upon a wet spot uh, in the milk or whatever I'm powdering, I would simply pour everything back onto the trays, put it back in the freeze dryer, and give it a few more hours. I just wouldn't take any chance with it. But by using the thermometers, if I get them in the right place, I really don't have that problem. All right, so I've got four quarts. So I've got a gallon of milk into four separate bags, a quart each. You certainly could put all of them into one bigger bag and have a gallon and then just scoop out what you want. So and to confirm that you've got them equal, if you want, one of the things I've done is I just tear out a scale with the bag and then check. So 102 grams, 103, 104, 103. So it's all within a couple of grams of each other. So there's pretty close to one quart in each. That's good enough for me. All right, so I've got the oxygen absorbers. Close them up gently so I don't push the powder out. And I'll close them all and then I'll seal them all. wide seal on it. So, I like to take these bags and kind of smooth them out over the top of that sealer bar. Make sure that there's no wrinkles. It's nice and smooth. And it's done. I like to let it set for just a couple of seconds to cool just a little before I take it out. I'm trying to seal the bag very high on the, on the bag, on the top edge. That way I can cut below it and still have enough if I want to seal it again. So if I only use half a bag, 
I could seal it again.